This is a fly taken from the Benchside Introduction to Fly Tying, written by Ted Leeson and Jim Schollmeyer. It's an iris caddis. It's an interesting fly because it uses both antron and xelon in it, uh, two materials that a lot of people use interchangeably, but uh, they technically are four different applications. Uh, so you start your thread on your hook for this fly and wrap back here to the bend and the reason we're wrapping back isn't to put in a tail per se, it's to put in a trailing shuck. And for that trailing shuck uh, we are going to use Zelon. Uh, Zelon is considered a better material for things like the shuck or uh, spent wings for a spinner. Uh, the fibers don't tend to mat together when they get wet. Uh, they have a slight crinkle as you can see and they're, they've got quite a shine or sheen to them. One strand of this is too much for this trailing shuck so you can see I'm just separating a, about a one to two inch length you can get away with just pulling apart like that. And um, checking this against the hook shank I want it to be uh, uh, half to uh, the full length of the shank in length. Uh, because there's no set length because it is a trailing shuck and so it's part of an emerging uh, transformation if you will from one stage of the insect to the other and depending where you catch them in that stage of transformation uh, it would be different lengths uh, the same thing with the wing that we're going to put on made of antron now I'm using a pinch technique to get this set on top of the hook here in the back you can see I bring the thread up between my thumb and uh, forefinger and then pull the loop down and that should trap that material straight on top of the hook. And it looks like it did. It stayed right up there. I look underneath. I don't see any wrap down around the bottom. And so I'll start wrapping forward. Now as you wrap this forward uh, if you're having a problem with the material not staying up on top of the hook like it is for me here, it's it's probably because you're using tension at the wrong time. See, if you wrap fairly light and then pull, wrap light and then pull, everything works fine. But if you wrap with tension, see how the, the thread just pulls the material down around the back? Let me pull that back out straight, get it back up on top. And see, I'll come up without a lot of tension, make the wrap, and then pull. A lot of there, yeah, see like that. A lot of tension can be put on that thread without breaking it and uh, you can see the hook flex uh, but if you put that tension on when you start the wrap it will pull the material with it. The thread will. And so here I've just checked my length with my scissors. Uh, the length of the, the trailing shuck is fine and I've got some olive brown dubbing here and I'm gonna uh, dub this on as uh, fairly thick uh, my application you'll see uh, but it's it's because this is a caddis fly and they have much bulkier bodies than uh, uh, than mayflies do this is about the m largest amount of dubbing that I would put on at any one time if I needed it even thicker than this I would just dub more over the top of this and I'm gonna wrap this double wrap if you will I'm gonna wrap all the way to the bend and then all the way back to the front with this dubbing uh, so that it does bulk that body up some. So I've got some bare thread I've got to use up and then the dubbing will start here. And we'll just wrap it all the way back to the end point of the body and turn around and come back up and set the uh, the iris or the uh, wing of this fly. And that like I said, that will be uh, Antron as opposed to the Xelon that we used in the tail. Looks like I got the right amount of dubbing. We'll pick this out before we put the wing on it. Might as well pick it now. It's the easiest time to do it.
Okay, here's some spooled Antron yarn. Now the spooled yarn is fairly coarse uh, compared to the uh, carded yarn that you can buy. Uh, but size 14 flies like this, this is this is fine. And you notice I just trapped this against the side of the shank uh, using my thumbnail. I'm not too worried about position because I can I can move it. So I rotate my uh, whole jar assembly. Look at this from the top that down on the edge like I wanted and then just wrap it around the bend of the hook and back up and there's there's what would be a large iris right there that's about as big as you would want to make it and uh, and we're gonna tie it a little smaller than that but there's no set size that's the point of this whole thing it's because it's at one stage or another of emergence So I'm going to pull this around. I'm just going to trap it against the side of the shank like I did before. I don't have to use a pinch technique on this because I can adjust it. A couple wraps, that's plenty to hold it. I pull it in a little bit to make it smaller and make sure I didn't pull it in too much. I ah, know, I got a good hole there. I could see the body. Look right down at it. That's good. So I'll secure those pieces. Get my scissors up in here and trim those off. If I don't do anything drastic like cut my thread, we're close to being done with this fly. wrap those ends down and, and again if you're tying smaller ones and you need a thinner material uh, if you buy the carded Antron yarn uh, it's a three ply yarn those uh, those fibers when you separate them out are much finer than these but this Antron uh, often is used as a wet fly wing as opposed to uh, being used on a dry fly like this it's an interesting application So here's some dubbing for the uh, the head of the fly, and this is a uh, Hairtron dubbing. A little sparkle to it. Don't need a whole lot of this. Just enough to cover up uh, this thread and make a little bit of a head. Tighten that up a little bit. Just move the jar out of the way so I can get close. And let's take a look here. I think that's okay. We'll put the knot in and we're done. One's good, two's better. Okay, now let's see about this iris. Make sure I didn't close it up or pull it too small. No, you can see down through and from below you can look up at it. See it around the bottom of the body, or behind the body when it comes up towards you. And there you have it, an iris caddis tied using rotary fly tying techniques.